All right, guys, welcome back. It is time for our project, the Koi Fish Watercolor Series. Now, before we get started, we kind of have to understand what a series is. And so, a series can be many things, but the paintings in a series all need to have a common thread that connects them together. So, connections can be made by using a common technique. And so, the artwork done by the street artist Banksy, if you look at the work, each of these works are made by using a stencil. And so, if you were to look at these works individually, kind of spread out, you would be able to tell that this same artist created each one of these works. And of course, what connects them together is that they are all done using stencil, so it gives it the same style. Next up, the, the next connection that could be made is by using a, a, this, a similar color palette. So Andy Warhol did a really good job by creating the 32 soup cans. And if you see the one to the left, again, every single one is the same exact color, the same exact font, the same exact shape and style. The only thing that is different is of course each soup flavor. And so again, if you were to separate all of these, you'd be able to see and understand that each one of these works was made by Andy Warhol. Another example, Piet Mondrian. So if you look at these works again, all very similar, very similar line patterns and the way that it's set up. And again, the color palette specifically is the same in all three pieces. So they're using the primary colors, blue, red, and yellow. And again, if they were separated, you'd be able to tell that that was the artist who created each one of those works. Last but not least, um, connections could also be made by using the same subject or elements done in different mediums or different ways. And again, this particular artist, when you look at their work, although each one is uniquely different in and of itself, they have very similar um, subjects. Some of them you can tell that they use different color palettes, but again, the style in which it's created um, is very, very similar. So again, you can tell that the same artist made all three of these pieces. So um, a series essentially is a collection of paintings that when viewed leaves no doubt that the same artist created all of them. The theme running through the work is clear and are connected in different ways. The viewer can look at the co collection and understand more easily what the artist is trying to convey. So looking at a couple more examples, here, there is uh, one of our wonderful art teachers who teaches middle school. Her name is Julie Steiner. And these three works, again, as we've been watching and as we've been talking about in a series, are, are very different, but they're also very similar at the same time. As you see, the same method and the same style in which it's created has a very similar color palette. And again, if these were all separated and kind of shipped off in different parts of the world, and if you were to visit each one of them, without a doubt, you would never question what artists, who, you know, who created these works. It's very clear that the same artist created all three, because again, they're interconnected in many different ways. Next artist, my favorite, street artist, uh, Shepard Ferry, was also known as Obey. Um, again, if you look closely, the, the work looks very, very similar, right? Same color palette, same style, but of course, each one is very, very different and unique in and of itself. So again, if they were all taken and shipped off into different places, it would be without a doubt that the same artist made each one of these and making the series interconnected um, and kind of think of it as like communicating with each other. So remember that when creating a series, the series can be connected by technique, color palette, or using the same subject or element, but done in different ways, or it could even be done in different mediums. So um, we are gonna hop in and look at some examples of the project that we're gonna be creating. All right, guys, so <clears throat> our project, we are going to be creating, as I said, koi fish paintings. And our main focus is to really practice and use the skills that we've learned through our technique sheet, um, along with a couple other methods that we've kind of just picked up along the way. Now, um, a series, the beautiful thing about a series is it really formulates when an artist is just kind of playing around and having fun with the materials that they're working with. And so at first, there's probably a good chance that you're not going to know what you want to do for your series or how you're going to interconnect them. And so that's why I have you as 
painting a minimum of five different koi fish paintings. Um, and then again, with the requirements, uh, at least three of them need to be in a series. So again, series are typically formed when you start out and you just start playing around with your materials, right? Start playing around with composition, where you want to place your fish, how you want the um, background of the water to look, right? It, yes, it's water, but it doesn't necessarily have to be water, right? It could be quite literally anything. You can again play around with how many fish you have, you can play around with all the different techniques that we practice, um, and again, at a point, you'll start putting things down and start really liking what you're creating and then from there you can start creating more in that particular context to eventually create your series. And so again, the first two should really just be experimenting, kind of just playing around with, like I said, composition, um, different techniques. Um, here I went ahead and I kind of started playing around with marker and incorporating the marker in. Um, Really, the only requirements for this project are that you have to create five different koi fish paintings, and three of them must be um, considered a series. And then, of course, the only thing is that the entire page has to be covered, with the exception of this little border here. Um, and so, uh, with the mediums that we have, we have um, watercolor, but you are more than welcome to use anything that's in your art kit. Uh, it could be the marker, it could be the color pencil, it could be your graphite pencil, literally anything. And so when you start this, again, remember, the first couple are going to be for just experimenting and kind of seeing what happens. And then, of course, I want at least three of them to be considered a series. So um, here, the ones that I've created, I decided that I was going to have these three as my series. Now here, the, what connects them together is, of course, I use the same amount of koi fish in each painting. Um, I use the same method in which how they are painted. And then in terms of the color palette, although I'm not using the same exact colors in all three, I am using um, similar color schemes in each. So as you, if you see, each of these colors, red, blue, and yellow are our primary colors. And then the fish are painted with the secondary colors that are complements to the primaries. And so, for me, this is going to be my three piece series here with my koi fish. And so for you, again, you know, as you're journeying through, you can totally find, you know, one method that you like. I really loved this one, but for me, it took a little too long. Um, but of course for you, this might be the one. Um, but again, remember, this is where you get to be creatively free. Just understand that everybody is going to be creating something similar, so ask yourself, how are you going to stand out from the pack? How is your series going to be unique and special to you? And how are you going to show that, you know, this was created by you, the artist, um, and it's very distinct, distinctly so. So, we are gonna, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to approach this in the best kind of ways, and then you guys can get started. All right, so the first thing you're going to need is the piece of paper that you're going to be painting your koi on. Um, this is a five by seven piece of paper. And again, this is where we're gonna be painting our koi. So to get our koi onto the page, we need to draw where we want our koi fish. Remember, um, what you create could be literally anything. You can have one koi fish, you could have 20 koi fish. It does not matter, okay? Um, so here, you have the option of hand drawing the koi, or you can transfer from these references that I have printed out. On these references, I have, um, it doesn't really look like it right now, but there's a variation of size. There's some smaller ones, some bigger ones, and as you see, they're all in different orientations and different positions. And so, you have um, a lot of option in terms of creating um, something unique and that's special and specific to just you. So if you are using the reference, then of course, as you can imagine, we're going to go ahead and bust out the good old light table. When using the light table, remember, you're going to plug it in to the light table from our charging block. You're going to push the button and then that's going to turn it on. Then you'll push the power button and that'll turn on our light table. Then you're going to of course go ahead and put your piece of paper on top and then you're going to go ahead 
and just kind of again play with composition figure out where you want your fish and then again what orientation do you want them in do you want them you know just going straight do you want them swimming to the side you have plenty of options now when you're doing this step you may or may not need to go ahead and just kind of block it over so you can see the fish. I'm giving you guys really, really nice watercolor paper so it's a lot thicker than your average. And so, to be successful, you might need to kind of just cover it up a little bit um, and then trace whatever size and position you're looking for. So, once you have everything traced, I went ahead for this example, just traced out two. You then are going to want to go ahead and block out your koi fish so that you don't get any paint on the koi fish itself by using drawing gum. So remember this wonderful blue vial inside your guys' box. This again, once painted on, turns into a rubber substance and this again will allow you to um, block out anything that you do not want painted. So for all of my examples, you will see that again I have a bunch that the koi fish is a different color than the actual background or the you know quote unquote water and so to do this and have it nice clean and precise you are going to have to block out the koi fish with drawing gum. So here remember take your paintbrush go ahead and dip it in go ahead and paint and when you're painting you have to make sure that you get it very 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 precise and right up against the line because remember again when it dries it's going to block everything out and if it's not sharp and crisp and you have nice smooth clean lines, it's going to um, not have the greatest outcome. So once it's painted, it should look something like this. And again, this is blocking out and covering that piece of paper. So now, once you get to this phase, you're going to go ahead and just paint however you want. Remember, um, your goal is to kind of experiment and just play around with different possibilities. Maybe mix a couple techniques together like I did this here. I did a, a flat wash and then I also did um, some wax resist. So again, your options are quite limitless and you can literally do whatever you want. So here, once you get everything painted, it would look something like this. Um, now before you paint, you have the option of taping down your work. Okay. Now, when you tape down your work, same exact thing, you're going to want to take some tape, you're going to want to pre-stick it to your clothing so it doesn't rip your page. Once it's pre-stuck, you then are going to go ahead and you're going to tape it down to your desk. Okay, so now here, remember that we're trying to create a nice clean border. Okay, so I only put it at the very edge and I tried to make sure that it's as straight as possible. Now, taping down your work is going to allow you to um, prevent it from curling in on itself and to have a little bit more control. Um, thankfully, this paper is really, really thick and so um, it's not going to curl in too terribly bad, but this taping down option is um, up to you. It's optional, you don't have to do it, it just makes your life a little bit easier. Okay, so when you do tape your project down, of course, you're not, you may not be able to paint it in one sitting, so you're just going to have to take the tape off and then just kind of fold it back and then just unfold it next class. So again, last but not least, your painting will look something like this. Again, practice with different techniques, practice with different ways of painting the koi's, and then again, don't be afraid to go ahead and possibly use some marker and add some lines and some textures and some details. Again, your options are limitless. You can literally do anything that you want. But remember, your goal is to try to make a series and make them all interconnected in some way and then also have your own personal touch so that it's very clear that you, the artist, created all three that are in your series. So with that said, good luck. Um, if you finish three and you want more in your series, you're more than welcome to. Um, remember, five is the minimum. Again, I want you guys to experiment and then also create, of those five, three in your series. However, if you want to create more than five, you are more than welcome to. Let me know if you have any questions. Good to go. Good job, guys.